Amen. Well, welcome to Friday, our Friday Night Daily Devotional, and thank you for all week that you've joined us. And um, I, I pray that you received and that the Lord has um, blessed you this week. We had some really good teachings, and I believe that they are impactful for our lives. And so um, as I close off this tonight, uh, you know, uh, the topic I think is, you know, uh, it's a tough topic to talk about, but it's rejoicing in hardship. And, and think about this for a minute. Um, that's not an easy thing to do. I think that anytime we're in hardship or suffering or circumstance that seems overwhelming, um, we tend to run to the complaining side. It's, it's just a natural thing that we do. We look for the bad, not necessarily the good. But you know, there's a teaching that's, that Peter teaches us, and it's found in 1 Peter chapter uh, 4, verses 12 and 13, and it reads as follows. It says, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through, as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad, for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world and so you know when Peter wrote these words Jerusalem actually was facing a lot of destruction actually it was impeding it was coming on and Rome considered Christianity a real big threat and so what was essentially happened was there was a heavy measure of persecution that was happening within uh, the city but Peter didn't want believers um, to lose faith Instead, what he wanted them to do was to understand that their hardship was making them an opportunity to participate in the sufferings of Christ, co-labor, so to speak. And so trials and sufferings, truthfully and honestly, um, have a way of causing us to become a little bit disillusioned at times. And so, you know, especially when our expectations are, you know, that life is supposed to be one of comfort and, and uh, real ease, I think, when we have it within our life. But one day, you know, something happens when someone finds out you're a Christian at work, or one one day somebody finds out in your neighborhood that, you know, you attend that church, or one one day happens when, you know, the business that you're starting, you all of a sudden people find out that you're 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 talking about your faith and all of a sudden hardships, you know, circumstances, rules, regulations, codes start coming into play. And all of a sudden we feel this heaviness of persecution within our life. That can happen at work, that can be within your home that can even be uh, among your neighborhoods and so Paul is describing this with that's happening within Jerusalem and so you know in Acts chapter 5 um, in verse number 41 it talks about uh, how the apostles you now what happened to them just to give you an idea they were arrested um, they were imprisoned they were beaten and they were told that not to teach or preach the name of Jesus anymore and so what does the Bible say their response was and in, in Acts chapter 5 verse number 41 it says the apostles left the high council rejoicing that God had counted them worthy to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus. Wow, talk about turning a whole new leaf there and taking a look at things very differently. That's what the apostles did. They looked upon their opportunity to be a good steward of what God has given them and not allow people to change their message, not allow somebody to silence them in the midst of what they were going through. And so that's what I would tell you um, here. I, I would say to you that rejoicing in the midst of trials is the power of Christ working within us. That's really what it is. When you're able to rejoice in the middle of everything that you're facing, that's the power of, of Christ working with you. And that is what the world around us, that's what the world needs to see. The world needs to see us acting differently in the midst of those things within our life. So if you've had a tough week, if you had some really hard times this week and you really thought, Pastor, I barely made it through, I'm going to tell you, count yourself worthy to be part of the suffering for Christ. As, as the apostles did, they rejoiced because in that you still were able to preach and really tell people about the love of Jesus. I want to pray with you if you face that kind of week. And if you're not, I want to prepare you for those weeks to come. Bow your heads with me. We thank you, Lord, because uh, we've been given the opportunity to suffer for you. And I know that's not a popular prayer. I know that's not something to rejoice about. But as we go stronger in you, we do. Because we understand that there's a message that we have been given that is precious. And God, the world needs to hear it. And sometimes it will cause us to be pushed, to be prodded, to be questioned, to be even sometimes downcast. But you know what, Lord? In the end, you are the one that receives the praise. And that's what this is about. That our lives would reflect you. That our hearts would reveal your love. And so I pray that over your children that this week, uh, if they felt that, Lord, encourage them. And those maybe, Lord, that have not, I pray, Lord, help them 
prepare their hearts so they wouldn't become bitter, but they would become blessed. I thank you for all that you do for our lives. I pray over your children now for this week and the one to come. May the Lord bless you, keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and may he give you peace throughout this week. God bless you. Amen. Well, again, thank you for all week that you joined us. And just a couple of fresh reminders. Um, you know, tomorrow we do have cleaning that we desperately need your help in. So please, 10 a.m. Uh, is our Saturday cleanup here. We do some things outside and on the inside. And we prepare the church for service on Sunday, which leads us to our second week of the power of repentance. Uh, this last week, I do believe that God had a word for each of us. Let the church say amen. If you watched, you'll know what that means. And so um, I pray that you say amen. But I look forward to seeing you this Sunday. Sunday at 10 a.m. for our live service in-house, or if you want to join us on Facebook Live, it's also at 10 a.m. God bless you.